Jason Marty signing in. Hey, my pro allies. Today we are going to be doing some troubleshooting, and the error soon to be all having today is where we've compiled our game to an executable, but then when we actually go and run that executable, and we double click on it, and it seems like everything's going well, and then we click play, then we get a little error message, boom, just that fast. So here's how we can figure out what the error message is so we can do something to solve it. First thing we want to do is we want to search up for OBS Studio. So basically what OBS Studio is, it's a free recording software and I use it a lot and it works 100% great for me. OBS Studio and download. So we're going to want to go with one that has the HTTPS right there, that S, very important. And we're going to click on that link and that'll take us to the OBS download page. And so that'll take this page and then you're going to select your operating system, whether you're Apple, or Linux or Windows. Oh, Linux. I love Linux, but but I'm win using Windows 10. So again, just go with whatever version you have. So then I'm going to click download the installer. So you can download the zip, you can view on GitHub, you can do whatever you want with it. But for now, we're just going to use the installer. So that's going to quickly download at a world record speed of, ooh, not even a megabyte per second. But that's okay. It gets there. So yeah, we've actually been really busy lately. I mean, we've been butchering up sheep, so doing until like six in a day. So yeah, life on our church is pretty busy. You never get a bored second, that's for sure. Okay, so the download's finished. So you can find that located under this PC. So you can just go all the way down to the bottom. And it's going to be under Windows System. And that right there, you're going to see this PC. You're going to want to go with that. And then it's going to be located in the download section. And right there, OBS Studio Full Installer. So then you just want to double click it. Of course, the screen always blacks out when it asks me for administrative permissions. Just say yes to that. Okie dokie. Next. And yeah, I've already got OBS Studio running. So basically say yes, yes, yes to all of that. All right, so we have OBS Studio installed. So now we're going to want to set it up to record. So to go to the Windows button, and then you're going to want to scroll down until you get to the O section and OBS Studio. And if you have a 32-bit machine, go with, click on the 32-bit installer. I have 64-bit, so might as well go with it. And it's just telling me that it's running already, which is fine. I can launch it anyways. So then, th then I'll open up you up to this. I'm not sure how this will go because I'm already using OBS to record, so I don't. But anyways, you're going to click on your settings, and inside your settings, you're going to click video. So that's right there. Click video, and right here, you're going to want to set the base canvas resolution to 1920 by 1080. Of course, if you're using 4K display or or only a 600 by 800 display, select your resolution that you have. And basically for the law of downscale filter, you can set that to how you like it, whichever works for fastest for you. I mean, if you have a really good processor, go with Landscross, of course. If you guys have a little bit lower end, then you can go with Bilinear or Bicubic. And you can set that to 60, the common FPS values, so that'll give you enough recording to see the error message. And then in output, right there, that tab there, you wanna click on your output mode and you're gonna want, want to set that to advanced. So click on it and make sure it's advanced. Typically it'll be set to simple. You're gonna to want to set that to advanced. So then ignore all that streaming stuff. If you're using it for streaming, that's okay too. But go into recording and set the type to standard and you can set the output to destination to wherever you want it. Mine's just located in my videos folder. So then you can see this court recording tab. You can click on that. And you're going to want to set that to either X2X4, or if you have a graphics card like me, then go with a, your dedicated graphics card, which is mine is an NVIDIA Corporation. And of course, if you're using AMD, it'll work just as fine as well. So, so once you've got all that set up nicely, then you're going to want to go down to this section down here and the rate control. You're going to want to set that to CQB. And CQP works basically the fastest, very easy on a lot of computers, but it's not going to be the best quality in the world, but we don't need quality just to see the error message. And make sure the CQP is set to 23. Okie dokie. And then set, oh, say apply. I'm recording right now, so I can't really apply it. But just hit apply and hit OK. And then what you are going to want to do is you're going to want to click start the recording. So I'm going to start this recording, which might be a bad idea because I'm already recording too, but we'll see how it goes. Yep, yeah, it's my head's probably getting all shaky, which so basically what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go again back to your application that's only spazzing out for a quick second and then not even let you read that error message. So go inside there and then just double click on it again. So double click and now make sure you've got this stuff out of the way. Hit play. Now it's recorded just enough so you can pause the video later and see what the error message is. So then open up the video file that you've already created. So I've got mine already open and set to the spot where I can see the error message. 
and of course because my head might be everything might be a little bit shaky right now because i am recording while watching a video which typically doesn't work because my computer's not quite that good so we'll see what happens so basically just keep waiting for it and then pause it once you see that okay all right here we go so okay so now we can actually see the error message so the error message is saying it's no such directory as free sans bolt so basically says it's not finding free sans bolt so that's okay so now we know what our error message is so now we can actually fix this so to fix that we can go into this pc again if you don't have a bookmark it's at the windows button and then you just scroll all the way to the bottom windows system right there this pc and inside this pc you're going to want to go into the c drive and then you'll see a, basically a folder load called Windows. This might be a little different on your on Windows or Mac. Basically, open up the Windows file, and then you'll see you're going to see another folder called Fonts. You're going to want to open up the Fonts folder, and that will open up the more give you a whole list of fonts that you can have. So here we're going to look for the font that we want. So, so once you find the font that you like, and I always have like consoles, so you're going to open it. You just double click on it. So that'll give you four options. First is bold, and then it's bold italic, and then it's just italic and regular. We're gonna go with Allegro, so select it by left clicking, and then Control C to copy it. Now that we've got it copied, we can go into the folder where we want it, and inside data, we're gonna create a new folder. So new, so just right click, new, and then folder. And we're gonna name this here fonts. There we go. And now inside fonts, we're gonna finally paste console. Up. So be sure you remember what type it is. So if you right click on it. And then you'll see properties at the bottom click that properties and this will tell you what type of file it is so it's console.ttf so that's what we're going to go with so just remember console.ttf or whatever font you're using so we can go back back so we're just going to change the font a little bit in the tubby game so just right click on the python file and edit with idle so and then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to scroll down go into where we have it loading the font right now so let's see where we've got it right here so now we just want to specify the full path to the full font file so this is going to be located in data and then add a forward slash and then it's going to be located in fonts as well add another forward slash and it was console a dot ttf so back, not not insert backspace or go backspace and con consola dot ttf so now if you hit f5 then we should be error free and it should be able to read and write it and find it where it is. And yes, it is reading and writing where it is. So now if we, we can recompile our program. And all we have to do is just, again, double click on the Windows batch file, which is going to be build. So double click on that. And then it's going to run. I'm really quickly run through it all. And it's just going to be basically recompile it. And then this way we can copy the data file back into it. So it's just saying it's all finished. Any key to continue. So we just want to copy that data file. Control C into build into exe windows 30 64 bit copy and then paste it in there and it's going to give you this little error message saying uh you already got a file in there so that's okay we can replace all that okie dokie and now if we double click on our application program or whatever it is they call it these days double click on it and now we hit play let's zoom out a little play and yeah, yeah so we have no errors whatsoever so this way it's not dependent on if you the guy has pi game installed or if he has that typical font onto his computer it's going to work no matter what because you have the font file into the data file so that's working 100 percent good to go so i hope you guys all enjoyed this tutorial if you guys have any questions or comments leave that down in the comment section and i'll be seeing you next video agent marty out